it's we're each going to give our three best and three worst moves of the Ken Holland era. So let's dig into it. What do you want to start with, best or worst? Um, let's start with worst. And I think one thing to preface when we do this, we did our best to cover as much ground as we could. And I think we can all agree the moves we had in there are top five moves at worst, good or bad. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, anyway, sorry, I totally missed that. I was trying to figure out Frank. Do you want to start with best or worst? Let's start with worst. So yeah, let's start with worst. Um, all right, Aaron. Number three worst. Okay, number three on each of our worst. Let's flash it up. I have the Duncan Keith deal, and this is going to be controversial. It's down at three. There were some other bad moves, like the Athanasiu one, for example. It gives up two seconds for Athanasiu, and then they lose them for nothing. They don't qualify him, RFA, all of that stuff. Um, I think that one is looked at differently if the pandemic doesn't hit. He loaded up. I think it was a good shot to take on Athanasiu. That's why it's not on my list. What's so bad about the Keith deal, says Owen? It's not the player Duncan Keith was as an oiler, but to me, it was a it was a microcosm of what some issues with Ken Holland were, and it was process-driven. Duncan Keith had a no-movement clause. He wanted to play in Western Canada. He wanted to win. Seattle was never a fit. Vancouver was never interested in him. He was a bad contract, an aging player, and the Oilers took on the full cap hit. Chicago was a rebuilding team. You look around the NHL right now at what teams have to do to get off of bad contracts. And Duncan Keith was a good oiler and a good player, and he helped the team. But like Ryan says, my worst Keith, Keith helped the team by retiring. Yeah. Like <laughs> the best thing that came of that deal was when we were like, holy shit, thank God he's re he's he's retiring. So um, anyways, I the Duncan Keith deal for me still, it it didn't work out. Be, or it's on my list because of the process. You needed to get money retained, and they were cap strapped. Yeah, I I agree with the whole idea of what you said about why the Keith trade was bad. The only good part about it is the fact that he left. But there was a lot of other positives too. I guess like the help he gave Evan Bouchard, like that that was a good mentorship to have. He was obviously part of the team that went to the Western Conference Finals. I actually don't have this one on my list, but it would definitely be one of the worst ones but my number three the first round picks okay Holland picked four players in the first round and we can all sit here and say well Roberg just played well it's like Roberg wanted a trade and we were all happy for him to go at the start of the season Dylan Holloway is yet to put together a full strong season I fully believe that's going to happen Reed Schaefer can't even crack it right now and I know he's, he was part of a deal and Xavier Borgo has been nothing so I think out of those four picks Right now, you can say one and a half has been good, and I'll give the half to Broberg. But even the Broberg one, too, like the guys who went behind him, guys like Zegras, Spencer Knight, Cam York, uh, Matthew Baldy, like I think we would all prefer those guys on this roster now because they have full time NHLers who are helping this team. So I know you can put that on the coaching staff, too, and guys like Ty uh, sorry, the scouting staff, Tyler Wright being the, the main culprit, being the director of scouting at that point. But I think the others could have executed better on their first round picks which would have helped them during this run, giving them more money. And maybe you don't have to re-sign guys like Evander Kane to the deals you do or go out and get an Adam Henrik and you can address something a little bit better. And Henrik was good, don't get me wrong, but I just think those picks could have been better in, in the moment. Yeah, I agree with you. I debated putting the Borgo pick on here, but again, I wanted to, similar to why I didn't put the Athens CU one, like weird draft year with the pandemic and stuff. There were a ton of bad picks in those drafts. So yeah, that's why I didn't put it on there. Uh, my number two on the list of worst deals is the timing of some extensions he signed. Signing Darnell Nurse when you did. Coming off a season where he had 17 goals in 56 games. Shooting percentage was through the roof. The defensive market was spiking. As much as you didn't want to run the risk of bringing him up to... Uh, as much as you didn't want to run the risk of bringing him up through unrestricted free agency or bringing him right up to unrestricted free agency... I, I think the timing of that was obviously poor. If you would have waited four or five months, his value falls off and you don't get yourself into that deal, right? And same thing with Zach Cassian. If you remember that one, I know some people want to blame pandemic on that. I'm actually not giving that as an out for Ken Holland because again, you signed Zach Cassian while he was in the middle of a goal scoring heater. Like yeah. he's a career bottom sixer. Why did you feel the need to sign him at that point? So I have the Cassian and nurse extensions as my number two. Yeah, the Ca the Cassian one was funny. Like the nurse one, like bad idea, but the idea of nurse being this young up and coming defenseman who looked like he was getting better wasn't like 
a crazy thing to anticipate. No. But the Cassian one was like, what are we doing here? Like, this yeah. is clear and obvious what is going to happen here. But my number two is another contract, and it is just a Jack Campbell contract. I think at the time, the Oilers needed a goalie, and it seemed like Campbell, well, he was one of the best options, right? And Darcy Kemper, I think, was the other guy then. But evidently, it's just not, to, not worked out. And they're going to have to buy him out. He can start today. A lot of people are talking about that in our chat now. They can start buying out Campbell today yeah. if they want to. By the sounds of it, they're trying to make a trade for it. But it's just been terrible. And it's going to handcuff this team now for whatever. What is it? Six more years? Four more years? Whatever it is. It's yeah. not been good by any means. So the Jack Campbell one is number two for me. I'm fascinated to know what your number one is. But my number one is the Jack Campbell deal. He, you committed $25 million to him over five years. He gave you one shitty season in the NHL. And then that's it. That is all. <laughs> so like, I, Liam, I, you know, I'm just, I, everyone knows the Jack Campbell deal sucks. I think they're going to have to buy him out, but who knows? What's your number one? What's worse? Go ahead. I didn't know this contract is okay. worse. You still have six more years of this guy. By no means do I think Donnell Nurse is a bad defenseman. I think on his days top four at best but unfortunately most of the time he's your fifth or sixth guy and right now we're putting him in the playoffs we put him next to our rookie defenseman who was out playing him and having to like make up for nurses mistakes and you're paying this guy so much money he's got to figure it out and you cannot move him because he has a no movement clause it's just you have no way out of this guy you've basically just got to play it until he decides to like i don't want to be here anymore and i think that's what makes it just that little bit worse than the campbell deal yeah, like for me, I'm going to disagree with you on that just because at least you have a player. And while he's not a player that's worth his 9.25, at least there's something contributing to your active roster. And like how much is Darnell Nurse truly overpaid by? Is he overpaid by 3 mil, 4 mil, 2 mil? Like wh where do you come out kind yeah. of on that range versus Campbell is $3.8 million of dead buried cap space and then the money you got to spend on a new backup. Like it's basically a $4.5 million cost to you, right? Versus if he was just even even a competent backup, competent backup, or like below average backup, and he'd still be on the roster, right? So that, that's where I'm at with that. At least you're going to have a player in Darnell Nurse, and you know he's tight with the core, and he's drafted and developed, all of that stuff. So, yeah. Um, I think uh, I think just uh, on the nursing, too, we saw CeCe get a little bit of chemistry with Kulak, and everyone that seemed to be able to move around – and find a partner. Like I did just mention Broberg and play with Nurse, but it still wasn't a perfect pair. And it just seems like the majority of guys who go to Donnell Nurse get slightly worse. And I think that's a real, like, the CC getting proven isn't a good luck for Nurse either. But let's go to the, actually, I had one more negative, which was interesting that I'll give an honorable mention to. Um, the How long it took Holland to get rid of Dave Tippett. That was just something he did not want to do at all and the team was going absolutely nowhere jay what he fired him just before christmas i think um, around that time yeah. Jay Wolf comes in guides the team to the western conference finals and it's just like everybody knew tip it was done and i'm not sure what holland was waiting for besides the fact he had never fired a coach in season before it took so long like you look back at that season the fact it took till february i saw some people on twitter saying another negative is how long it took him to fix the oilers blue line I, I don't know about that because, like, again, year one, Cody Cece was good. If you, like, after the first year of that contract, we were all kind of sitting there being like, whoa, like, I had low expectations coming in. And it was like, shit, that, mm -hmm. I, that, that, that was all right. Like, that's pretty good. Um, and the Duncan Keith deal, like, I hate the acquisition cost and how he went about getting him. But Keith came in and gave them solid, solid-ish top four minutes, right? So it took him until the Ekholm deal to really say he'd not quite fully fix the blue line. And Naeem says the blue line's still not fixed. No, it's not. But like it got him to within a game of the Stanley Cup finals. So you can't hate the blue line all that much. But that ties in nicely to our, our kind of three ups here for uh, the three big, the three good things that Ken Holland did. So AB, you can flash up my number three on uh, the list of good. I actually, I went with the Stuart Skinner contract, man. Like we would be really pissed right now if, if they had bridged Skinner on some sort of like a, uh, you know, two year, $1.3 million deal. And we're like, I, ah, you know, we really need to just keep some cap space open here. So let's just go year by year with Skinner. No, they looked at him. He came in, played so well uh, when Jack Campbell faltered. And it was like, screw it. Let's keep this guy under contract. And now, like I said yesterday, one of the biggest strengths of this team in their cap picture for the next number of years is that 
They have a top 15 goalie who I think is going to be a top 10 goalie in the next year for 2.6 million for two more seasons. Massive win, massive win. So um, this one's number three. I think it's clearly number three. The other two are are significantly ahead of it, but the Skinner contract deserves to be on the list for me. Yeah, I think that was, that was a sneaky good piece of business by uh, by Holland, especially the way Skinner played in the playoffs once he came back too. But I forgot what my number three is, Aaron. Oh yeah, the Nuge contract. I mean, you got this guy locked in. He had 100 points last season. He's just consistently a strong player for you in all situations. We all love Nuge. I don't need to explain much else, but I just yeah. think it's a really good deal. And even when it gets to like year six, seven, eight, whatever it is, I think that'll be fine at five. Or what is it? Five, whatever. You know, he's not going to age poorly. So that's a really good deal on my front. Yep, that's great. Um, number two on my list. I'm very interested to see if we have these in the same order. Ekholm deals two for me. Did you have it at two? I did not. I had the uh, the Hyman deal at two. Okay. Um, you know, the Ekholm deal, great. Um, you know, there was some risk involved getting a defenseman that's that age and giving up kind of what you did. You know, one of your top prospects at the time, Reed Schaefer. Um, again, that's almost a negative, though, that Reed Schaefer was trade bait of that kind of value and not something more valuable that you used a first round pick for. But um, you gave up a decent amount to get Matthias Ekholm, but the deal worked so damn well. There was some risk, maybe some process stuff you could talk about, but he saw an impact piece out there that perfectly fit the team. He went out and got him, and they don't make the Stanley Cup final this year if it's not for Matthias Ekholm. So the Ekholm deal I had at number two, I think the gap between Ekholm and Hyman is small, um, but you had Hyman at two instead of Ekholm. Yeah, I just think the Hyman deal... It's easier to sign players in free agency than try and acquire players like Ekholm. And we haven't really seen a trade like that in the NHL for a t quite some time, whether you have the term on the guy. And they've had such a, an amazing impact on the team. So I actually, I we can throw it up if you want, Aaron, because we're just the same for the top four. But I had Ekholm at one for that reason of, it took a little bit more execution rather than just negotiating with a player and his agent to try and get a guy here. And it did, it did feel like the Hy Hyman wanted to be here really bad as well. Ekholm didn't even know trade clothes. He had just signed. Or, you know, He didn't was, have any trade protection, which was the interesting no part protection. of that extension. Well, there you go. And I just think being able to get him has changed. But it fixed the blue line in a weird way. Like People, who was it? Naeem said the blue line's not fixed. Florida just won the Stanley Cup with Dmitry Kulikov as their sixth defenseman. Like, come on. The, you can't, you're not going to have six perfect defensemen. It's very, yeah. very... I'd love for you to find me a team in the NHL that has six perfect defensemen. You're bang on with that. Like, it's never going to be perfect. I think maybe the flaw for the Oilers is, like, should they have figured out what they had in Philip Broberg earlier in the season? That's a bit of a chicken and egg debate, right? Um, like, if you bring him up and he doesn't play all that time in the American League, um, you know, does he become the defenseman that he is? I, I think yes. I think if you would have given him the time to sort it out at the NHL level, he he would have gotten his game into a decent place. But anyways, I don't think you can argue with either of our threes. I don't even think, though, and maybe this is a cut, like, you know, Nuge, you, I, you had Nuge, I had Skinner. Four good moves. There were other minor good moves in there, but like, cool. Like I don't know. Yeah, Kulak is a good move. And the deal they gave Kulak was solid as well. Like, I, I like bringing him back in free agency. So, yeah, Brett Kulak is, is another one that probably deserves an honorable mention. Um, is there anything else on the honorable mention front that you liked? Um, Yanmark for $1 million. <laughs> yeah, again, oh, yeah, I said it. Okay. There, I said sure. it. I, nothing that really stands out massively at the top of my head. The thing I think, well, well Henrik was a good addition to it, the deadline. We could add yeah. him. Kane was good in the moment. Um, then the unfortunate part about Holland was we can say like there was a few deadlines where he just didn't go in as much as he could have. Like you go out and you get Dmitry Kulikov, like stuff like that. And it's like probably had a little bit more then, but I think overall it was just to stay with Holland was better than worse. I guess you could say like the, the standards is not very high for what a general manager and success is in Edmonton, right? Like he's yeah. probably Best GMs you have ever had, which is a wild statement to say for a guy who went to one Stanley Cup final five years with Connor McDavid and Leon Bryce. Yeah. Yeah, the bar the bar wasn't high, and I think that's the interesting part of that kind of statement. And you mentioned the Willis tweet from earlier. So yeah, anyways, there's our there's our short for giant question. Honestly, like we talked about this so much yesterday. We've known this is coming 
for so long that I really don't feel like we need to dig into it all that much more. So that's a wrap on our Sherwood Ford oh, giant more, question. Oh, okay. His press conferences, the mentions of Detroit, the toilet seat. There's so many great quotes from him that would come out over the years. And I just loved how every time he did it, people would literally tweet like how many times he spoke about his time with Detroit. So I can't wait. Guide in record book. Guide in record book. <laughs> yes. It was a quote machine and he didn't even mean to be. <laughs> it really was something, man. Like his press conferences were all, it was just listening to, I don't want this to sound like rude or whatever, um, but like. It was listening to grandpa, right? Like it's, half of it was just like endless sentences trailing off in different directions. And I loved it. Tyler yeah. Mulek says how oh, bad he was at stories. math. The best one though was when they got Keith and he was like, what did you want me to do? Get him for free? It's like, <laughs> yeah. Ken, yeah. <laughs> have you paid an ounce of attention to the rest of the league? Yes. In fact, I didn't want you to get him for free, Ken. I wanted you to get an asset with him in making this deal. Like I, I wanted you to get paid to bring him in was the kind of the whole beat with it. Like, we're not going to get him for free. He's a Hall of Famer. Ken, he's 40, and he's overpaid. Yes, you can absolutely get him for free. God. Anyways, <laughs> um, people were saying Perry and Kane signings. Those fell into his lap. I, I'm not going to give him a ton of credit for those. That's not like good GMing. That's just things popping up out of nowhere for you. So, yeah. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube. Podcasts, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it, so hammer that subscribe button.